Self-love requires discipline. Discipline doesn't always feel good. If I'm not okay, my partner's not okay, my kids aren't okay, my business won't be okay. You see these people always taking care of others. At what point do you see someone taking care of themselves and putting themselves first? Look, God told me to meet him at a runway with no parachute, with no baggage, leave the negativity behind. Ever since, I've been taken off, and I never look back. I'm your host, Alex E. Edwards, and this is the Gem Drop Podcast. Welcome to Gem Drop. We like TMZ, but we don't gossip, we boss up. And today is a special show. Um, so I was talking to this guest, and by the end of the conversation, I wanted to write a book. But it didn't stop there. This was this is the part that's important. This is why you need friends, family, you need people around you that would do this. She then called me about the idea. Like, when is when is this going to be real? Then called, then called, then called. And that's that's so important to have that energy around you, to 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 have people to call you and say, don't forget about your dream. Don't forget about your dream. Oh, when are you going to make your reality? What date? Hey, hello. How you doing? I'm just letting you know. Don't forget about your dream. And she did that for me. And it was so important when the dream was completed. Um, I wanted her feedback. I wanted her feedback. She gave me her feedback. And that was like the final touch. And Mortgage Before Marriage was written. All right? I, I gave my gem drop. I gave my sauce. This person is one of the, the biggest inspirations for Alex E. Edwards completing Mortgage Before Marriage. Today, we are speaking with Celeste, the therapist. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you. You're welcome. All right. I appreciate you. Um, and like everyone says, you are super dope. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right, you hear that a lot, right? (laughs) Um, Every now and then. And so, Celeste, Mm -hmm. who are you? I, it's interesting listening to you say that, um, because Alex came to my house and, uh, uh, brought me the book with the note in the book, um, It was unexpected um, because uh, I don't remember those specific conversations, but I know. Yeah. I mean, I I know I'm always um, talking to people and listening intentionally and uh, hearing and just trying to motivate people. It's just naturally a part of what I, how I feel and who I am. Um, So it's interesting to hear you uh, like lay it out that way because it was just, it just felt like nothing. It was just yeah. me saying like, oh, hey, remember you said this thing? I didn't think nothing big. I didn't realize how impactful that was. Uh, um, I was telling my husband, when you brought the book, and I was just like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that what I said. I was like, I don't even know what I said. That was... Like you sparked something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so who am I? I'm a, a mom, a wife, a therapist, um, a lover of people, um, you know, I've always, uh, I always enjoy people and want to see them win in life. Um, and I, I just think it's kind of like how God's created me, uh, to like really have this like care for people. Mm. And, and, and what do you do? I am a therapist. Um, and I work with people. I, uh, I'm a podcaster. Um, I speak, uh, I do a lot of things, <laughs> Uh, that involves helping people change. Change what? Change for who they are meant to be there to help them become their authentic self, not yet who society says they should be. Oh, oh, okay. So and and okay, hold on. Gem drop. That that was big, right? Okay. How did you get into therapy or yeah in this industry? It was by accident. I um, 
I was 19. I needed a job. I was uh, going to Quincy College. It's a small community college in Massachusetts. Uh, didn't really have direction, but I knew uh, that they said back in, you know, I graduated high school in 2000 that if you want to do something with your life, you got to go to college. So didn't know about SATs. I didn't even know about what an HBCU was until I uh, became a therapist. And people started talking about it. So I was winging it. Um, went to Quincy College, worked at a grocery store, needed a job. And so I uh, started working at the shelter down the street from my job, I mean, my school, because they had an ad. And um, I did it because it was paying a little bit more than Stop and Shop, not because I was like, oh, I want to help the homeless population. And um, back then, a lot of the people in the uh, homeless shelters was uh, struggling with alcoholism, not like the opioids, it wasn't like younger people. So I'm dealing with older white men in the shelter. Um, and I'm this young black girl and I'm passing out these toiletries and just talking to them because I'm working overnight. They can't sleep. I'm up. We're having a conversation. They would write me notes, tell me, thank you. And, um, I didn't know what they was. I was like, what are you thanking me for? They was like, thank you for listening. And like, I had nothing in common with them. I'd never been homeless, never struggled with addiction. And um, I learned that there was an office where a lady who was a therapist was getting paid to talk to people. And so I, I made my major to become psychology. Um, so it was literally by accident because I had these random people telling me, thank you. And I really didn't think I was doing anything, but it was because I was listening to them. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. You had good you well, You good. I never seen you so speechless. Like you, because I'm like, because <laughs> I'm saying, because honestly, what I'm thinking about, is 19. Yeah. In a shelter. Yeah. Overnight. Overnight. Older people. Yeah. And you're impacting, like yeah. you're you're very impactful, mm -hmm. like in 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 motivating and in, and in inspiring them to probably be better. Mm -hmm. They still reach at, people at, reach out to me to this at day. 19. I know they're. And 19. It was like, I seen you grow up and my husband worked there and we were friends and we started dating. So when we got together they, and we were, me and my husband were both the same as far as our passion, but not really understanding people. Um, and they just loved us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jonathan's amazing, hands down. And he's phenomenal. Actually, yeah, probably meant to be together, to be honest <laughs> with you. Now that I think about it, two phenomenal people um and that will sit down and listen and we'll be there for you yeah hands down hands down so that's that's why i'm speechless i'm, I'm just like wait a minute you're 19 in a shelter speaking to these men and you're empowering and you don't even know what you're doing god mm -hmm. is like i'm gonna put you in this yeah. situation and i need you to help these yeah. grown men yeah. that's probably twice your age yeah. or three times oh yeah and yeah you are going to make them better. In, yeah. like, if they 60, in 60 years, they haven't heard a voice like yours and they haven't um, had ears like yours yeah. that will sit there and listen. Yeah. Yeah. And listen. Mm -hmm. And they still contact you today. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm speechless. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when you, it, it's crazy because you trip over your future self on accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, you know, so, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, I fell into the field by accident. But, you know, I'm a very spiritual person. So I know, you Ooh, know, it was it was his plan. Um, and every time I think about it, like listening to you talk about me saying things and, you know, when I'm sitting with people in sessions and I'll like just drop these gems and they'll say, oh, my gosh, I was just thinking about that. Like How and initially when this would happen, it would kind of freak me out, too. And then it happens all the time. So I know it's not me. You know, I know it's like my purpose. So anytime I feel like, dang, this is a lot, you know, especially when the pandemic happened and just thinking about, uh, you know, all the things and stories that I hear and I'd be like, God, I don't know how you how this is going to work, but you're making it work, you know. Um, and so because I hold on to my purpose, that's, you know, people will say you're so disciplined or consistent. It's like my purpose is always in front of me. So it's hard not to be consistent and disciplined because I understand who I am and what my purpose is. Wow. And so a lot, okay, I'll say, I know growing up, getting a therapist, 
That oh, means yeah, crazy. No. Absolutely. Something's wrong with you. Uh-huh. You know, absolutely <laughs> not. People uh-huh. will laugh at me. Yep, yep. How do you change someone's mind or or a certain population to mm-hmm. say, you know what, it's everyone needs someone to speak to? Well, you know, I was that person. You know, I, I always tell people I was probably about 21 uh, and I remember, I, you know, never, I only grew up in church, but I remember uh, dealing with this car dealership. They took uh, $3,000 down payment because I had it. Then a month later told me that I didn't get the loan and I need to bring the car back. My boyfriend, Jonathan, at the time had crashed it. And then they gave me a $200 check because I was waiting for insurance. And so they didn't go. And so I remember just feeling stressed and aggravated. I was at the hospital. My oxygen level dropped to 90 and um, they kept me overnight. And these people at the hospital said, your test came back good. Is there anything wrong? Maybe you should see a social worker. I was highly offended that they asked me if something was wrong and I maybe need to talk to someone. And I always share that story with people because the way I talk about mental health, people think that this is just the way I grew up and it's not. Um, I said I was a whole adult needing to be talking to someone and was given the opportunity and took the IVs out and walked out the hospital. Cause I'm like, these people think I'm crazy. So when you ask me like, how do I get people to understand the importance of mental health? I think it's just my transparency with my life. Like when I'm talking to people, whether speaking or individually, um, I don't make it like I'm the expert and I've arrived. I say, I get it. I understand. Right. And Maybe now's not the time, right? You meet people where they are, and I, I'm really good at literally meeting people where they are. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what can I do? If I have some friends that I know, I'm like, we just need to talk to someone. Just They will call, they will call me. I'm like, I'm not, I, I'll give you good advice, mm-hmm. but I'm not that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so what, yeah. what do I do to kind of like, you need to, let's, you need to go to a therapist. And then they'd be like, no, I don't need to. But this is what a therapist is. and this is- Right. You know, I, I think it's also important, you know, we live in a culture where it's very individualized, uh, where it's individualism, and uh, they only push psychiatry and, and therapy. And um, it's important to know community is important as well. It's also important to know that everybody has their process, right? And when I have people who come to me with this kind of same scenario, and I'll say, well, you know, you're trying to... You, you, you say you want to like lose weight for, for, let's say, but it's not like you're going to the gym or you're changing your eating habits. It takes time for you to get to that point. Um, and I think that it's important to know like therapy hasn't always worked for people depending on who you get, their style. And so if you don't find a therapist or can't find one or can't afford one, I don't ever want people to think that they're failing in life or they, they're hopeless Right. So if you're if you mention it and it was like, no, nah, I'm OK. I was like, all right, cool. Like, don't push it. You know what I mean? It's like, OK, if you don't want to try, you're, you're allowing them to. Right. Oh, okay. You're allowing it. And um, okay. people like you or I, you know, okay. we it's easy for us. It's easy for me to listen. It's easy for me to give advice. But I also am mindful of my time and realizing like there's only so much I can do. Um, and, uh, you know, people will people will call you. And, you know, know or call, like if they're calling somebody over and over again and you're allowing them to speak for hours yeah. and you're feeling drained at some point, you, you have to recognize your role in it. Yeah. Um, and so for me, you know, I, I'll give advice, you know, whether it's friends, family, I'll say, you know, OK, blah, blah, blah. You know, I talk about how try reading this book or listening to this podcast. I've had people recommend my podcast to their friends or somebody who wasn't into therapy eventually after listening to some stories, it was like, you know what? I think I'm going to try it. Right. So just because people don't want to do it at the time or don't understand it, it's not the end of the world, but also you can't be a replacement either. Yeah. I, I used to, um, own a, uh, um, oh my God, a sober house. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 I used to own a sober house. Mm-hmm. And the way someone would say, you know, I had enough. Mm-hmm. If, everybody cut that person off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everyone. Yeah. You can't go to your mother's house. Yeah. Can't go to your father's yep. house. Can't go to your brother's house. Mm-hmm. Your your sister's not talking to you. Your mm-hmm. mother's not picking up their... No one mm-hmm. is speaking to you. Mm-hmm. 
believe it or not, that saved a lot of people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Because the boundaries, right? Yeah. When I used to work in the emergency room and the parents was coming in struggling with their adult kid or, you know, I, and I would say, and I wasn't even a parent at the time, but I knew the importance of looking at um, what we're doing individually and how we allow certain things in people's lives, right? It's not that the parent don't doesn't love their kid because they're saying, hey, you know, you got to leave because of your being disrespectful. You're not adhering to my boundaries. I love you. I love you enough to make sure that the boundaries are in place because I can't enable you because if you don't do what you need to do for yourself and I'm not here, society's not going to be putting up with it. So while I'm here, I want to make sure that you have the right direction. And yeah. I don't think as individuals, it's easy for us to blame others, right? And say, well, this person did this and this person did that. I'll listen. But then I ask this person like, okay, how did you show up in that situation? And not that saying that what you did to me wasn't wrong, mm -hmm. But if I keep coming back to you at some point, I have to recognize like I'm still allowing it to happen. Uh, interesting. So when when I um when I'm in a situation, mm -hmm. the first thing I do, mm -hmm. the first thing I do, I look at me. Me too. I, I wasn't the, always like that though. But I know. Yeah. I, I'm in the mirror and I'm like, Yeah. What did you do? Yep. Yep. I, what I I, I I I what <laughs> did you do? Yep. Once I figure out I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna yell. I'm gonna have a conversation. Yep. And I, I learn a trick. This is my trick. When someone's yelling, right? And say if uh my friend is yelling or uh a wife mm -hmm. um or a husband, you you get close to them and you stay calm. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm talking. This this is why I wanna talk to you. <laughs> And and one thing you you, you let them talk, mm -hmm. right? You don't cut them off. Just let them talk, and you get and, and you gonna speak. And what they gonna do? They are gonna cut you off. And and this is what I do. I'm not the, I'm not the professional. This is what I do. So let them speak. They are gonna cut you off. They angry. Their emotions is just everywhere right now. And you stay calm. And once they cut you off, they say. I need to speak. The only way we could have a conversation if I speak too, right? I'm not going to cut you off. So once you finish speaking, I'm going to talk. All right? Is that okay? All right? And and honestly, it's, it's not having an argument anymore. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it calms down, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of times when, when people speak, if I raise my voice, you raise your voice. Yep. And it's like, it's what's going to happen? Right, right, right. <laughs> what you think... Is I'm going for a blow. Right. You going for a blow. Right. You want the last word. Right. I want to hurt you. Yeah. You want to hurt me. Yeah. And we want to see who's going to hurt each other the most. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember? You remember this? Matter of fact, I didn't want to tell you, but I'm going to bring it up now. Boom. Got mm -hmm. you. Then you said, oh, okay. Look at this picture. Mm -hmm. Boom. It just makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Especially in a, in a marriage mm -hmm. where you're going to sleep next to the person. In like a yeah. couple of hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, you know, people aren't thinking that deeply. You know, the ego kind of shows up. Um, you shared a post the other day of a a, a guy talking about an orange, and yeah. um, they can only squeeze out of you what's in you. And uh, you know, again, I help people become their authentic self. Yeah. And so, if you have a lot of stuff mm. in you, a lot of hurt in you, yeah. those emotions of you kind of talking to that person may trigger something that happened ten years ago. Yeah. And if you're not consciously aware, you're responding from something that has nothing to do with that situation. Yeah, exactly right. You're mm -hmm. exactly right. And and I, I love the fact that you said you said the real you. The authentic. Authentic you. Yeah. How do we find that though? Yeah. Like how I, am I how do I know I'm the real like the authentic me? Yeah. Like what what are some exercises? Yeah. What's some ex, what are some exercises that I could do? to find out who I am, the true Alex E. Edward. That That's really good, you know, because when we think about our influences, we're influenced by our upbringing, our family, culture, society. TV plays a lot of a role in it, social media, unfortunately. And so if we're constantly on the go, working, blah, 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 how do we ever know who we are and how we're affected by things? 
I tell people this story. I was walking and I seen this guy with the five guys shirt on. And then later on that day, I wanted five guys. I had this craving. And I'm so aware that I knew that craving came because I just seen that guy walk by with the shirt on. Most people don't even real. That's something small, right? It's really, um, it's not going to affect me in any major way unless I'm eating five guys every day. But um, me getting five, but think about the bigger things that people are influenced, especially you talked about marriages and relationships. I think about how much junk is out there and people, and there's these narrative of like, you know, certain things and um, people don't realize they're bringing that back home to their relationship, trying to figure out why they don't have a Benz, but the person on social media has a Benz that they just probably took a picture next to. Right. And so if you want to learn how to be your authentic self, the best thing that you should work on doing, be intentional on spending time by yourself. Mm. A lot of people have a hard time um, being alone. And if you have a hard time being alone, that's a sign that you need to work on taking time to be alone. Even if you start with like 10 minutes of your day reflecting on how, how do I feel? What happened today? Most people aren't doing that. Any free time we have, we have our phones and we're going straight to social media. I have a Kindle app on my phone. I have a Kindle, a Kindle app. Free time I have, I'm looking, I'm reading stuff. The way I'm able to regurgitate and spit out knowledge is because I'm always um, putting knowledge in my spirit. And I tell people like when I think about like why people are around me and they have a sense of peace, it's because of how I treat my day. And I am very intentional on feeding my spirit the way I feed my body. Like I can't survive if I don't eat and I can't live and be my authentic self if I'm not feeding my spirit with things that are going to allow me to do that. Gem drop. <laughs> Gem drop. That... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So one thing you said is loving yourself, being yeah. with yourself, yeah. right? Um, and... I wrote in a book, we are so, we would love everyone else but us. Yep. It's, it's so easy. Nope, I'm going to fall in love with you. Uh, not, not me today. I'm just going to love you today. I don't forget about me. I, wanna, I don't want to fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, some people feel better or they think they feel better. But at that moment, they feel good loving someone else and not dealing with their shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Why is that? You know, we, you know, earlier I said a parent may have to, they love their kids so much that they have to put them out because yeah. they're enabling them, right? Self-love requires discipline. Discipline doesn't always feel good. Um, a lot of us have not been shown proper love, right? Um, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, people have had parents that, you know, didn't take care of themselves and, and, you know, probably didn't do the best for their child. And so, our first introduction to what love should look like is through our interactions with our caregivers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also you think about what we've watched on TV and, you know, you get together, you live happily ever after, and you see these people always taking care of others. At what point do you see someone taking care of themselves and putting themselves first, right? In my household, my kids get to see that firsthand. I even will... You know, Fridays is my day where I love cooking. Fridays, I don't cook. I order pizza. I've seen you at Domino's on a Friday. And yep. I was like, yep, <laughs> this is my day. Actually, it just happened. I was like, this is my day. I don't cook. I'm grabbing pizza. And I watch my Netflix, right? I had to force myself to do that because as an entrepreneur and somebody that does multiple things, it's too easy for me to just like work all the time. There's yeah. always something I need to do. But I also recognize that if I'm not okay, my partner's not okay, my kids aren't okay, my business won't be okay. And so I intentionally start my mm. day with me. It's not by accident, it's on purpose. Mm. Mm. You are, you are, ooh, I, I'm loving this, this conversation. All right, so I always say this too, and, and some people are like, what are you talking about? All right, well, I do have kids. I do have a wife. Mm -hmm. I love Alex Edwards first. You have to. Right? You have to. God. Yep. Alex. Yep. Alex. Like I'm, I have to be infatuated with Alex. Understand yep. Alex. Mm -hmm. Keep Alex safe. Mm -hmm. All right. After that, I'm going with my wife. Yep. I'm going going this way with my wife. Yep. Some people. Like, How you not love your kids? Like, yeah. Calm down. She needs to be okay. I need to make sure <laughs> yep. she's okay because we need to be okay. Yeah. 
Because if we're okay, the kids is going to exactly. have a blast. Exactly. The kids are going to have a good time. Mm-hmm. But if we break up, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard mm-hmm. on the kids. Yep. Mad, like, and, 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 and I think a lot of people don't understand that. They don't. And when they, especially when they say, oh, my kids come first. And that person that helped yeah. you bring them in the world is sitting right there. Yeah. I'm like, that, that's a blow. Yeah. I think I, I, if my wife said that, I'd be like, huh. Oh, no, nah, my kids come first. I don't care what you do. My kids come first. I got care, but my kid. If you it like, I'm like, huh. A big part of that is, you know, for some people, I see, I, you know, I deal with people, and you know, they're running around doing everything for their kids, and um, a lot of that is unfortunately unresolved trauma where they didn't have it done to them, mm-hmm. right? So they're doing great things for their kids, but then they're harming themselves in the process. Yeah. I remember I was like, my kids is going to be on this and that. And my two little ones, one was doing football at the time and one was doing dance. And I remember I was like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot. That's it. They can't do nothing else. (laughs) I'm not about to be running them to piano and all this other stuff if I am not in this position to do that. Because then I'm operating off of like E. You know what I mean? If I'm running, you know, sometimes my mom, she's like, (laughs) if my car is a quarter gas, she's like, you need to get gas. I was like, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? You know, but if you're running on E and the light comes on, if you could break down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think about parents who kind of have that mentality. They're breaking down, but they think they're operating off of love. They're operating off of their trauma because yeah. they don't want their kids to ever experience what they have experienced, but then they're not completely whole, you know? Oh, oh. All right, so it was this lady in... Um she decided to go hiking. Mm-hmm. She shows up, this big bag on, mm-hmm. it's max heavy, mm-hmm. and everyone's looking like, how the hell is this woman gonna get on top of the mountain with so much things in her bag? Mm-hmm. They laughing, <laughs> just paying. Her. She pays no one, no attention. She's walking. Twenty minutes later, her back hurts. She takes off her bag. She looks in her bag and she said. Daddy issues? Mm. I never had daddy issues. There's daddy issues and it's not mine. Let me get this out of my bag. She throws it out. Yeah. Put it back on, walking up. She's like, yeah, feeling good. Back hurt again. She opens her bag. She said, divorce? I never got a divorce. I love my husband and my husband loved me. What's going on? She's almost to the top. Back hurt again. She said, trauma? All this trauma, all this stress, Mm -hmm. doesn't, it's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. Throw it out. She makes it to the top. Everyone's like, what? How did you Mm -hmm. get to the top? And she said, I emptied my bag. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I, I love that. I, um, you know, it, it's interesting how um, I love watching my clients go through their transition and get to this like aha place and they have like so much peace. And I, I'll pause them, you know, when we get to these moments and I'll say, you didn't hit the lottery. You don't have a new house. You're actually in the same place you really don't want to be in, but you feel a lot lighter because you've released all of that stuff. We continue to carry things over and over again. And when I, I'm, you know, when I say this, the, what we need to do to get to where we need to be is simple, but it's hard to do because we're really trying to reprogram our system. I don't ask people to do nothing hard, uh-huh. but it feels hard because your system has never done it before. So it's like, whoa, whoa it's been part of your identity, trauma, pain. Being a victim, being a victim, oh my gosh, that's a huge part of people's identity. That's not their authentic self. That's what happened to them. And they've chosen to carry it. And I say chosen because we have the ability to release it, but also we don't understand how. Mm. And on that note, you are watching Gem Drop. We don't gossip, we boss up. We'll be right back. 
Hi, my name is Celeste. I'm a therapist from Boston, and my goal and everything I do is to help shift the way you think. If you want to learn more about me and what I do, all you got to do is go to celestetherapist.com. So, all right, let's get real. Yeah. Realer. I was so, gonna say, am I being yeah, real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be vulnerable now. Safe space, gem drop. Welcome to Safe Space Alex. All right. So, this a friend of mine asked me, "Do you think you are a people pleaser?" Mm-hmm. Ever since she asked me that question, it 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 took over my mind. Mm-hmm. Took over my mind, and. I feel like at times I am. Mm-hmm. And I, and then I started to think about my past, mm-hmm. the people in my life. Mm-hmm. And then, here it goes, someone else said, you know what, Alex? Mm-hmm. All your partnerships, you are the come up. Mm-hmm. You do more for them than they do for you. Mm-hmm. And boom. Another. And I'm like, you know what? It's time to stop that. I have mm-hmm. to change that. Mm-hmm. I have to change that because so when you have kids, when mm-hmm. as you know, I don't know. Well, I, I'll say when I had kids, I expected the people to love my kids like I love theirs. Mm-hmm. That's what I expected, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And now I know I was wrong to expect that, mm-hmm. but. At the moment, Mm -hmm. that's what I expect. I'm like, yo, I was always there for your kids. I'm thinking, you're going to be there for my kids. Mm -hmm. In my life, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And it hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, it it really hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, if I, if, like, if I could cry or let it go, like, let it out. Yeah. You know, it hurts. Yeah. Like, if they don't show show up to my, to the kids' parties. I'm like, I I never missed a party with your kids, though. Yeah. And you just say, ah, I'm not showing up to your kid party. Mm -hmm. Um, or even to spend time, mm-hmm. right? It, it just hurts, and especially when my kid would say, "Who is that?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and in my head, growing up, I was like, "This will never happen because we'll be mm-hmm. this tight, and I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna be Uncle Alex to everyone." Mm-hmm. And 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 it it just kind of is destroying me inside, and sometimes I just don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say where to go, but. Not where, not how to act, and I come up with. Again, I, I talk to myself a lot. Yeah, a lot. I speak to Alex Edwards a lot. So, I'm like, well, everyone's not gonna love you the way you love them, mm-hmm. and that's just the truth. Mm-hmm. It's, I I could be a mechanic for someone in their life, mm-hmm. and then someone else could be the doctor, yep. and so on and so on, right? And maybe I was a mechanic in their life. And they are something else in my life. Yeah. And maybe I didn't see it yet. I didn't see it yet. So if you're watching this and you know what I'm talking, I didn't see it yet. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. But um, I, I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of pain. Yeah, I mean, if you know, you have expectations uh and and it doesn't happen the way you would like it to happen, uh, there's a grieving. I you yeah. know, I would say it's grieving because you're aware yeah. and it's something you're accepting, right? So you're going through this emotional roller coaster of anger sadness like there's this this um it's not a linear journey it's a very like up and down journey of like oh my gosh this is happening um and it's dope that um you know in order for you to hear that are you a people pleaser you're in a space where you are able to receive information and grow i say i'm all, i'm still growing i yeah. haven't arrived um and it goes back to what have i allowed right um yeah. and i think about Maybe you over have showed up for people, even when um, you were too tired or, you know, you didn't take care of yourself Um, and to put those expectations on others wouldn't be fair. And I was the same way. And, you know, I think the best thing that's happened, you know, I took you take your power back by taking accountability. Um, And and that's what I think people that always feel like a victim or something's happening to them don't do that. I know that's not the case yeah. for you. You're able to take accountability, um, but it doesn't change the pain that comes with that, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. And with, but I'm, I think about it a lot, and I'm like, all right, well, 
because some people is real close to me. Like, mm-hmm. what's the, like, what's the cutoff? And and then I feel, and at times I'll be like, oh, I don't, I don't want them to be to be hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because I could take the pain, and maybe they can't. It's just all this excuses coming in my mind, right? Like, oh, God bless me with this. I should just let them go, but it's, but I shouldn't let them. I can't let them go. You, it's even though if I'm if I'm blessed, I'm blessed because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's yeah. why I'm blessed. That doesn't mean I should let you uh, treat me how you want to treat me in my life. I need to set boundaries no matter what. In Point general, blank. yeah. Uh, you know, I'm about to be 41 years old, and um, I feel like during a, like when I was like 29, 30, and then really started to become aware and noticing people in my life. And even with my clients, I notice the more aware you become of things, the more you realize like how people may not be what you thought they were, who they thought you were in their life. And um, that's hard. But I also, you know, when I'm working with people, I remind them that people can't be everything for you. Right. Yeah. So it's not about always having to completely cut people off, but recognizing like, you know what, this is a person that I I could go to a conference with, or this is the person that I I'll may be able to put in different departments. Put, it, put them in different departments. Yeah. Like the fact that we're not taught that, because think about it growing up, we're with uh, people in our lives out of proximity, right? I'm gr- the, the neighborhood I grew up in, same socioeconomic status. We're, you know, we're together, same school, right? As we get older and grow, people are growing at different levels and we still keep them in the same position as we're growing, not recognizing that we're different because, at the, you know, we, we need to look at quality and not quantity and growing up. I think, you know, these are my people and blah, blah, blah. So you have all these people in your life that may not be the best and mm-hmm. you haven't adjusted to who they are in your life. I like that. So you're saying don't. And just throwing it out there. This is what I think you're saying. I don't want to put nothing in your uh, words in your mouth, but judge people by what the quality that they they provide, they provide yeah. versus how long you knew them. Exactly, and we've done it opposite, right? Got I think you. about relationships, and uh-huh. when I'm working with people, it's tumultuous, and you know what happens That's is true. that oh, but we've been together for seven years, yeah. your hair's falling out. You're yeah. gaining weight. You're not happy. But we've been together for seven years. I'll like when I say it out loud, they're crying. It doesn't make sense, right? And so I think that if we start to put more value and love ourselves, you know, a lot of times I say people are offended when I say, "Do you love yourself?" Yeah, I love myself. And then I start mentioning what they're allowing in their life, and they're crying. I said, if there's somebody important in their life, whether it's a niece or a kid, is would you tell if they came to you with the same scenario? Would you tell them to just, oh, it's fine? They get emotional when yeah. I'm asking them to put it in a terms of somebody else in their life. So why are you doing it to yourself, right? And how far do you go, though? Like, some people, say, for instance, my mother, and just throwing my mom, I'm, I'm using you as an example. <laughs> I love you. It's not you. You know it's not you. But say my mama mm-hmm. was just, like, taking advantage of me. Mm-hmm. And maybe she worked with me. Mm-hmm. And I had to fire her. Mm-hmm. And if I fire her, she's going to be on the street. She's mm-hmm. going to probably be in a shelter. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is mm-hmm. because she's not respecting my boundaries. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Yeah. A mom, a kid, yeah. a partner, a yeah. friend, a best friend, right? Regardless of how close they are to you, at the end of the day, you know, I think if you said, if if I said um, my mom, you know, let's give an example, say my mom is beating me with a hammer every day. Would I say like, oh, how much do I take it? No. I wouldn't say that because guess what? Like I'm going to be in a hospital. I'm going to be, I'm seeing the pain in real time. Yeah, yeah. And I think especially in our community, yeah. we allow certain things because they're family or because yeah. like blood's thicker than water, right? I have some people that are closer to me that aren't blood because I've reframed the way I think about that. Yeah. And so when you say like, at what point do you allow yourself to make sure the boundaries are, are adhering, your mental health, just because they're not beating you over the head with the hammer, your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Okay. So how about this? So if you constantly tell people like, hey, or, or, certain people or different people, whatever, or the same person, I don't like this. 
Mm-hmm. And they're like, you always complaining. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I, the questions I'm asking is, 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 is for the audience, right? Because mm-hmm. in, in, in my head, I'm like, so would you just cut them off in my head? But mm-hmm. but if if you're like, if they always, you're always complaining when you always calm and you're like, hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. When you did that the other day, I didn't really respect it, or mm-hmm. it made me feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. And this person, guess this person might can and handle the truth and how you bring it to them because yeah. no one else does it. Yeah, everyone just suck it up. Yeah, uh, yeah. And how? Yes, I'm talking to you, mother. Now I'm talking to you, mommy. <laughs> so my mom used to we if something was wrong, she was like, no, no, don't tell them. No, I don't want no trouble. I want to mm-hmm. start no trouble. She would always mm-hmm. say that. I've never understood. I'm like, so we gonna accept this? Mm-hmm. This doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, this doesn't make sense. So when someone say, oh, you constantly complaining, what does that mean? Is it is it there's probably time to end that relationship? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think about people where, you you know, it's like, oh, don't start. And there's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. Every, all these scenarios you're throwing out are extremely common, by the way, which okay. you probably know because you talk to people all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, people, for people that struggle with... Um, putting their boundaries up and don't want the struggle. If you choose not to deal with that issue, you're keeping it internal. There's a lot of people dealing with a lot of internal conflict. That's not theirs because they are choosing not to address the issue. Um, So you got to really, and I'm always like the way I teach, whether it's in in person or social media, I drop these little like things because it's a lot of information to to understand and gather. So I put it in little bite sizes, right? And so when you think about like, oh, conflict is hard. Yeah, I get it. In that moment to address Alex and what he did to me feels hard. And if I if I choose and if I choose to do it, it's still gonna be hard if I have to address you, right? It feels hard, but guess what? I'll be able to like breathe better, cool. right? But if I choose not to address you then guess what? It's going to be eating me up and then I'm going to be coming back over and over again. Right. So that's one. The second thing uh, that you asked in regards to if people are saying, well, you're complaining and you're this. Earlier, I talked about the importance of taking time to understand yourself. You have to understand that people, when you try to put boundaries in place, it exposes the toxicity in relationships. And so a lot of times when I'm working with people and they're working on change, that's when the conflict starts coming because you're choosing to change up our relationship. You're not yeah. doing anything wrong, yeah. but if I'm your real friend and I'm your people, I'm like, all right, I get it, you know. But you have to understand, people will do that because it's like, whoa, 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 why are you doing that? You didn't do this before. You always said yes to me before, and so it, it's expected. And so that's when people like fall back and stay in in the place that they're not meant to be because they're not aware that this is going on. And so they get gaslighted. Right. Mm, mm, mm. How about the other way around? I mean, so. How about when Alex Edwards is too real? Right. Was like, when do you calculate? I I have an issue. Now I'm talking about me. I have an issue with this. How do I balance being Alex, you don't really need to say that. I know that's how you feel, but come on, you didn't need to say it. How do you? <laughs> how? <laughs> you know, th- it's interesting because uh, um, <laughs> it's therapeutic for me, but something's really. Th- I should yeah. never had. To, you know. What I'm saying? I get it. I get it. Um, it's it's hard because you know we live in a country where we sugarcoat everything. Yeah. When I work with people who's been in other countries and they talk about like. Uh, they f- they find America interesting in the way that we are not direct. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you're a direct person. You're not doing anything wrong, but sometimes people str- may struggle with that. Um, and thinking about, like, how do I manage how much to say if it's affecting my business? I, I have to speak up. Thinking about me saying this, what outcome am I hoping to get? Right? So when people are talking to me about, like, whether it's a, a parent uh, dialogue where, you know, they want it, they were like, but, you know, this, in the way they are, and I said, you have to understand when you address it, they may not be able to hear you. Are you ready for that, right? And what outcome do you want to happen? So it really depends on the outcome, mm-hmm. right? How much does it matter? Is it going to affect you if you don't speak up, yeah. 
And, and, and sometimes it's none of my business. Because I don't, and sometimes it's none of your business. And, and that's how, I don't always like say everything. It really depends exactly. on how I'm affected. And so a lot, you know, I'm, I, I know a lot of people, but I stay to myself um, because I recognize just how dysfunctional yeah. people choose to live. Sometimes it's none of my business, yeah. and I need to understand. You just that. gotta understand. And the that. second thing is, yeah. I always want to make someone else happy because, and I re- I, I realized I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. That's why I want to make someone else happy, mm-hmm. right? And then I'm like, all right, Alex, you need to start working on yourself. Mm-hmm. What makes you, you need to make it, yourself happy? Put yeah. yourself first. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and 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 focus on you. Yeah, love you. Yeah, and once I start doing that, I was like, yeah, you can't tell me nothing about me. Um, you can clown me. You can do whatever you want. I'm good. Yeah. Because I took all the power away from you. You yeah. have no power. Yeah, we give people that power. Yes. As long as I love myself, you have no power. Yeah. Alex can only control Alex. Yeah. And, you know, I think we do our, not think, I know we do ourselves a disservice when we are like, but, you know, when clients say, yeah, but they made me do feel this way and they made me. And anytime mm-hmm. they start saying, I let them talk a bit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, did they make you or is it that you allow? And it's something just that simple sentence just switches the switch for them. You know, my tagline is I'm here to help you shift the way you think. And I think about my life and how for so long I didn't realize like it was possible to feel and be how I am. But it was the shifting in my thought process that happened by me being intentional about what I was feeding myself. Because people will say, oh, who are you surrounded by? It's not just the people. It's what you're exposing your mind to. So let me ask you this. Can you give us like three tips to improve our friendship? Yeah, friend, you know, friendships are like complicated because of like, the, especially the longevity of it, yeah. right? Um, remembering that you are, um, you don't have control over the other person, mm-hmm. right? I think that's important because a lot of times you say, if, if only, if Alex only like did this or that, like it would be better. And so, you know, recognizing the limitations that Alex may have um, and addressing things in real time. I have clients that will hold on to things and um, bring it in session and talk about their people. And I'll say, you know, that thing that happened, you realize it's festering because you haven't addressed it. So what happens is your mind, if if I have a, um, a white Mercedes and I um, start seeing a bunch of white Mercedes, not because people say, oh, I'm going to buy the white Mercedes Celeste has. No, my mind is seeing it every day. So now it's able to point it out so, so easily. So if you don't address the thing that's happening in your friendship, your mind's only focusing on that person in that way. So nothing they're ever going to do is right. This happens in relationships all the time, in intimate relationships, friendships, family dynamics. Um, so be mindful and address things in real time. If you really want to be their friend, the, the, the hard part is that we sugarcoat our friends and we don't tell them the real deal because we are afraid they can't deal with it when things come up. But if you feel like it's affecting your relationship, you got to speak up. And, you know, the biggest thing is just understanding who you are, you know, working with people over the years and as they've become self-aware and become their, becoming their authentic self. They start to realize they don't really like some of the things that their friends do or who they are as a person. And that's their choice to be that way. But now it really doesn't fit. So unfortunately, sometimes some of these people you thought were your people may not be a good fit. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. They just may not be a good fit for you. And that's okay. I think it's important to understand that it's okay that some friendships may not be the same. And we may have to grieve that. Nobody talks about that, right? We just try to like stick together. Because mm, of time. Because of time, yeah. And time is not. And they may have gone, we may <laughs> have trauma, we may have been through some similar things too, right? So we feel like we owe them because they helped us through something, right? So, interesting. Because we, when we, when I was talking to some business owners and they feel like they have to help the people that went through the same thing they went through. Yeah. Like that's their customer, but but they, that that particular customer point ain't working the same. Yeah, they, they so you got they can't address. survive. Yeah, they can't pay bills if they, mm-hmm. but they want to think with their heart yeah. first. Yeah, and I, I never, I can't understand. I was like, your heart will will make you broke, will get you broke right away, right? Mm-hmm. And I think you, just think with your mind. If you if you work smart, 
if 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 you go after the clientele at a million dollars, you could help anyone at three hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can even help them even more. Yeah, yeah. Right, or put a team together to help them while you mm-hmm. help three a million. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think that part is very important. They didn't understand it. No, I'm going after them. 300,000. Well, 300,000, you're still miserable. You're still in the same space. And it's not, you're not feeding your passion because you can't, yeah. you can't travel the world. Everything you said you was wanting to do because yeah. you're at this price point because of your heart. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, I, I watch Suits. <laughs> it's a, a show with Flores on it. But um, I think about the company and how they have multi million dollar clients, but they have this, they're able to do pro bono work yeah. and help like smaller people, right? Um, and when you talk about leading with your heart, I think about leading with emotion. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't aware of how they feel. They're not aware of identifying it. And they don't realize they're basing their life off of their emotions. So it's okay to feel empathy or for, for people. Or I, I, I have empathy for people. Yeah. I remember when I started and I had to recognize, like, I can't just do free therapy. Yeah. I have a family. I have things that I want to do. Right. I can't say yes to yeah. everything for free. And so for me, it's I can still love people and care about people. But then the logic comes in where I recognize what I want in life, my goals. Right. What I want to happen. And so I think when you think about if you're somebody that has like did things based off of emotion, recognize that emotions are going to come. We're human. Right. Just acknowledge them, but don't make your decisions off of them. And so in order to do that, we got to understand what our what success looks like for us. Yeah. And everybody's success isn't going to look the same. It's not cookie cutter like America says, marriage, house, car, blah, blah, blah. You got to look at it what it is for you. And when you do that, you know how I said I, it's easy for me to be consistent and disciplined. I know my purpose. I also know where I want to be. Like that's identified clearly. So my decisions are based off of my goals. Where are you going? Where I'm going. Mm. A lot of people is just driving and jump drive. don't have a destination. Mm. Jump drive. <laughs> so you brought something up. I was going to wait to bring this up. What you said, uh, marriage, house, car. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, that's what, you're right. That's what America wants. Mm-hmm. Alex wants house, then marriage. Mm-hmm, all right. Mm-hmm. Mortgage before marriage. And do you agree? Mortgage before marriage? Yeah. You know, I, it's interesting because um, uh, women that I've worked with and just like, and they would talk about like getting a house. They say, I always thought I would be married first. And then because their friend may have brought a house or like they've been influenced by people in their circle. So the trend is turning. But I think, again, growing up, looking at things on TV, looking at how you think it's supposed to be, you're waiting for that partnership to uh, get a home, not realizing you're already making enough to get a home. And I know that your mindset is more like the financial benefit and stuff like that, right? Which makes stability, sense. Yep. stability. Yep. But also, people have to recognize that some of the things they may be waiting on or doing is based off of like what society has deemed it to be. You know, you're exactly right. Mm-hmm. I think your youngest child could be a millionaire right now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and. That's that's how really how I feel. Mm-hmm. It's up to us. Mm-hmm. It's up it's, to it, us. Yeah, yeah, it's not you up to us. set the standards. Yeah, it's not because he, he or she, they, your child don't have to wait until they're 30, mm-hmm. 40, mm-hmm. 50, 60. No, mm-hmm. it's no law mm-hmm. to say, hey, you could go after your dreams at 12. Yep. No law. Mm-mm. But we just like, nah, we'll just wait to school and then we go to college and then we're going to do this. And this is just life. It's almost like when people, when you ask someone, so how you doing today? You know, just getting by, just trying to survive. I'm be like, oh, get I know. away from me. <laughs> get away from me. Oh, nasty. <laughs> you just trying to get by. You trying to survive. Oh, I cringe. You did that when yesterday. I hear that. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, that sounds so bad. <laughs> or or when you trying to c- celebrate someone. Yeah. Like, Yo, I see you making all that money. Who me now? I'm broke. Ah, get away from me. You can't even understand. I'm trying to celebrate you and you're not accepting me. Yeah. Oh. Get away from me! Yeah. And I'm like, w- we are, we are, we are in trouble. Yeah, we are in trouble, Celeste, because 
the training, all the past training we went through to to dislike ourselves and not and 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 and, and don't accept nothing good in our lives. Yeah. And if we think if we get something good in our lives, we want to get rid of it right away. We destroy it. Or, we are in trouble. You know, I um uh so I've always worked for nonprofits, and I you know I grew up in a way where it's like you work for a company and you know for years you retire and um. Uh, I was trying to get on with the state and never got hired, but you know, that was God's plan. And, uh, I remember, uh, this black, my, uh, supervisor, she was like, Oh, why don't you go into private practice? And I was all like, yo, like, um, that doesn't make sense. I get sick in vacation time. Now when I think about it, I'm like, that's wild. But back then that was like, I, I get sick in vacation time. Like who would do that? I get a check every week. Like that's crazy. And, um, Eventually, I was like, you know what? Let me just start it out part time, right? So, 2015, I was like dabbling in it. 2016, March came, and um, this guy who owned a pharmacy, um, I, had, I was kind of working with him through some clients, a white dude, and he was like, yo, Celeste, when are you going to get your own? I was like, you know, I'm waiting for things to be in a nice, neat package. And he said to me, Celeste, people like you will never have their own because you're waiting for things to be in a nice package. You're waiting for things to be together. And I went home and I told my husband about the situation. And back then Craigslist was kind of popping. I don't think Craigslist is popping anymore. It's and I was Facebook like, Facebook marketplace now. I was like, I'm going to um, go. I went on Craigslist. This was in March. I found a place that was like, uh, I was paying 12, it was 1200 a month rent office space with a waiting room, an office in the bathroom. And my husband, so we had purchased our house in 2000, our first house in 2009. 2009. And um, I remember my husband said, well, if you want to do it, we can refinance the house and pay a year's rent. I was kind of heated because I'm like, what's my excuse now? I ain't got no excuse. Yeah. Like we can afford it and I don't have. And so I end up getting, uh, I start, that's how my entrepreneurship journey start. As far as this, all this other stuff I do, just step by step. I remember I wrote my first book as a journal and um, this actor that I, that I met, uh, um, Romney Malco, through social media and um, I was like all excited about the book and stuff and I gave him the book and he was like, Celeste is bigger than the book. So at the time, I didn't have any other entrepreneurship entrepreneur friends. I didn't have nobody that was kind of doing their own thing. So me, I'm thinking like, oh, it's, this, is, this is cool. This is cool. He was like, it's bigger than the book. And it took me time to understand what he was saying. I felt like I rate like my plateau because yeah. I made it through college. Like I didn't even think I was gonna do that. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So like when I think about like success and all this stuff, you wanna make sure you have people that are doing more than you too. Be mindful of and even if you don't have anybody that you know personally. Read, read a book, right? Get that knowledge in you. Don't let not having somebody to guide you be an excuse for not getting what you need. Um, and, and so it's just interesting how my journey of entrepreneurship and just speaking and, you know, when I opened my practice, I didn't even want my picture on the website because I'm like, it's not about me. That was, I never... When I worked at the shelter, I said, I want to make a lot of money just so I can help like have a day center because they would have to walk the streets all day. Never wanted to speak or do any of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, it was literally little by little. And again, I'm like, okay, this is my purpose. I never wanted the spotlight. Wow. And uh, before we go on break, the, the comment you made, you said, don't wait. Don't wait for someone. Oh, man. Um, when you say could go, you could read a book. Even, oh, even if, if you don't yeah. know that person. Yeah, if you don't have somebody in your life, like don't let that be an excuse. Don't get stuck in a barrier because people are like, oh, well, I don't know anybody or I don't have anybody. I was like, okay, there's YouTube, there's Google. I broke my toe uh, a couple weeks ago and um, the gym, is, I mean, working out, moving my body is important to me. It's important to my mental health. And um, I went on YouTube and, and, and Googled workouts with a boot on. People was like, oh, that's smart. Yeah, y'all, we Google all this other stuff about, but we don't go and look up what we need. We, this is, we have information at our fingertips now. And when it comes to us, if we're loving ourselves and disciplining ourselves, we're going to think about how do I get out of this? But when we don't do that, we get stuck in the barrier. Oh, I don't have that. So what, you just sit there? 
gem drop. <laughs> we'll be right back. Selling a home can be one of the most lucrative things you can do in your life and choosing the right real estate brokerage will ensure that. In that case, Thumbprint Realty should be your only choice. So before you sell, call Thumbprint Realty at 617-287-9000. Thumbprint Realty, real estate done right. All right, so you said something that's very important. One, again, we, we spoke about Jonathan Vizier. Um, he's just a great guy. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Jacob, phenomenal guy too. Ironically, I met Jacob first. My brother. Your brother. <laughs> and we believe it or not, I don't know if he told you, but we either stay on the phone and talk like for me. a very long yeah, time yeah, yeah. or in person yeah. talk for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and now Jonathan and I, it's like the same thing. Yeah. When we talk, we about to talk. Yeah. And it's just a, I don't know, you just got two great men around you. Yeah. You know, like Jonathan hands down is a phenomenal person. Mm -hmm. God loves him and he loves God and he loves his friends and mm -hmm. he loves his family. Mm -hmm. That's up. Uh, that's mm -hmm. like he's the type of person, even I know I, he could help me, I don't act mm -hmm. because I know he's helping a lot of other people. To me, I'm, I'm yeah. dead serious. Yeah, yeah. I'm dead serious. Like, nah, I'm not going to ask him. I'm going to figure it out. Right. And, um, but you said, he said, let's refinance the house mm -hmm. and pay a year's rent so you could chase your dreams. Yeah. just And it's like, he doesn't try to, he he just, he drops knowledge. He just drops it. He just, it's like, it comes out of nowhere. And and yeah, that that's literally what he said. Yeah. How important is to have someone like that to call husband? So important, you know. Um, I've never been in an abusive relationship. Uh, I, you know, I've been with Jonathan for twenty years, and um, I didn't realize like how like hard relation, like not hard. Like, don't get me wrong, it wasn't like we just went through this linear journey. But when I think about the support that we've provided over the years, um, that's important. You know, if if you're in a relationship with somebody that's not supporting you. How do you grow? And in, in life, you know, the goal is to grow, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So in October, second week of October, my wife and I are going on a date. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So it's an activity in the book. So we are, the kids are going to the grandparents' house, mm -hmm. and we are spending 24 hours in the house mm -hmm. by ourselves mm -hmm. with no phone. Mm -hmm. We have to, and we have to be in the same room for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't wait. That's dope. I just can't, I can't. That's dope. I mean, we about to laugh, we might cry, we might, I don't, we're going to play games, we're going to talk. Yeah. We're going to encourage, oh, we, I just can't wait. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know what it feels like? It feels like I have so much to tell her. And we live it. together. Well, you know, it's you got to think about it too, um, because our first vacation without the kids uh, they were probably about, uh, they're 12, well, so we have four, um, so the youngest 12 and 10, they were probably like four and five or five and six. Mm -hmm. And I remember I, how nervous I was to leave them. I'm always nervous. <laughs> He's like, they'll be fine, yeah. right? Uh, but I also remember um, how good it felt, right? Yeah. And because I'm always thinking about things and how, and I realized, like, this is something we have to be intentional about, yeah. whether we're going on vacation alone and we do a family thing and then we do our own thing or whether we go like I'm the one that puts the dates in the calendar. Yeah. Right. Like, um, well, we're going away in November. We already have a date in two. You know, it's we meet weekly. We check in. Um, I think about businesses and how you have staff meetings. And I think about relationships and how there's this assumption that it just flows yeah. and it doesn't. And you think about like, I'm, we're, I'm about to be 41. He's 40. If we've been together since 19 and 20, we're not the same people. Yeah. Right. We've grown. Yep. And so because, you know, and I, I think we make relationships harder than they need to be because we're not taught how to be in a relationship, how to maintain it. 
But when you look at a good business and their model and how they have intentional time on the calendar, it's like we got to think about it the same way. Yeah. 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 So I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Can't lie. That's dope. I'm, I, can't, I don't know. It's, so life, it has to be a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like second week of October. I'm here counting down. I'm like, <laughs> I don't care what. No. I'm not answering my phone. Yep. Only only time I'll answer my phone is my mother calls. But that's <laughs> the, the parents that's gonna have the kids. Other than right. that, forget <laughs> about it. I'm not. I'm, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to hear what she has to say to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I like, I just can't wait. Yeah. It is weird. It's, it's, it's like a weird excitement. It's an important excitement. Yeah, you know? it's like you know how many times people end up feeling like roommates, right? And yeah. it's like I, you know. I, I was like, I get excited when he comes home. He gets excited when I come home. We get yeah. excited, and that's not the case for people that been together as long as we've been been together. And it's not because yeah. we're unique. It's because of the intentionality we put in it. There's nothing when people are like, oh, I, you know, I, you know, whether it's individually like how I am or our relationship. I said it, it's not. It was never perfect. Yeah. It's happened with intention. When yeah. things came up, we talked about it. Yeah, right? like that's important. We have a. Gr- we speak about everything. Yeah, you that, have that's to. That's one, and we 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 play a lot. Yep, yep. <laughs> we play a lot. So that's another. We play a lot. Like we we grown some grown people hiding because we playing hide and go seek with the kids <laughs> in the house and hide in the closet, see who hides better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and and I, I think that's so powerful. Yeah. The only way we could do that though yeah. is because I love myself. Yep. She love herself. Yep. And that we love each other yep. and we love the kids. Yeah, that's how it's it works. It's the only way. Can't work any other way. That's the only mm-hmm. way. If I don't love them, I'm not hiding and go seek. I'm not doing yeah. that childish. And yeah. then Carter and Callie look at me like, eh, why? Why you can't play with us? Right. I don't got time for it. No, I do yeah. got time for you it. You have time. Yeah. I, I do have time for it. Um, so if I want to if I want to improve my marriage, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I want to go to therapy, mm-hmm. but my wife doesn't want to come to come with me. Mm-hmm. How's that conversation? Mm-hmm. What kind of tips can you give me to? Is it the same conversation? The same kind of tips you gave earlier, like hey, you know, maybe send her your your um some of your videos and let her mm-hmm. watch on her own before, mm-hmm. or is there another way to kind? Because of, I want to do it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think it's important. Again, it's similar. Um, meeting people where they are. Um, and, you know, in relationships, you know, when things come up, it's interesting how people are like, oh, we need we need couples counseling. And couples counseling, mean it's hard to find a therapist, or again, you may have a hard time. Um, suggest Suggesting other things. All right, let's be an intentional about checking in, right? Let's read this. There's books with, uh, uh, what is it, workbook, like um, writing assignments we can do together, right? Like, let's make another okay. adjustment Maybe over time we'll be like, all right, let's bring somebody in that can help yeah. us, um, but not getting so fixated. And this happens a lot in, in my sessions with people. They'll get fixated on, but they don't want to do yeah. couples counseling. Um, and so I, I help people not get stuck in the bear. We'll get stuck in that because we think it's the only way. Got it. And so you mentioned your first home and now you're on your second home. Yeah, so I mean the only the reason why we was able to purchase our second home is because of the first home, right? And um I remember we were going to sell the first home um to purchase it cuz we needed a bigger home and um uh the banker said uh why would you do that? You could just pull the equity out of um uh, of um the house. Um and so we were able to do that and with some savings and and purchase our second home. So and what did you do with the first home? We rented out. So you got landlords. Yeah. So our mortgage and uh, for our tenants in uh, the first home for top and second, the both floors pay for both of our mortgages. <laughs> Gem drop. Hold on. Is that what we came here for? <laughs> Hold on. Did you just hear that? Curtis, did you hear that? She said she living for free, baby. She said two homes, two roofs for free. Probably like what, five bathrooms altogether? Uh, one, two, yeah, Six, five. Oh, five. I got three in the other house. Yeah, five. Come on, let's go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> so you said one home pay for two homes. One home pay for two homes. Yep. 
So y'all banking over there. <laughs> and it's not, look, let me let you know the 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 first home could fit in the second home. I'm just wanna, <laughs> just wanna paint the picture, everybody. I wanna look in the camera and paint the picture. <laughs> we we about to end, but I want you I want to paint the picture. The first home could fit in the second home. I just wanna mm-hmm. be real. Mm-hmm. Just want to be real. <laughs> Small mansions over here. <laughs> Mini mansion. So, so y'all, y'all doing pretty good over there. Yes. I love how, I love the information that you provide to the community yeah. um, because that wasn't intentional, mm-hmm. right? Um, but every time I hear you talk, I'm like, yep, yep. But, you know, I'm grateful that it happened that way, yeah. um, but it definitely wasn't. I don't want y'all to think we like knew all this up front. It was it it worked out. We had the right people in our lives. Joanna and I didn't know that our tenants yeah. would pay for our wedding. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> right. And it was it was it was it felt so good just having money after the wedding coming. Yeah, in. yeah. Instead of spending all your savings. Yeah. And like, what a damn, we got to save again because yeah. <laughs> we got to go buy a house. Yeah. And then hopefully by the time we buy a house, we still married. Because <laughs> if he was like me, I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> wait, this is forever? <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait, marriage is forever, Curtis? I didn't know. I said, wait, hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure. Wait, this is forever? Like, this is it? Ever, ever? Forever, <laughs> ever? And in my head, I was like, I was I don't know what I'm doing. And then it, it all calmed down because when you realize you married the right person, oh, you yeah. don't have nothing to worry about anymore. Yep, I was yep. driving today and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't Left think I can out, find yeah. someone better. Mm-hmm. Like, we all have issues and everybody yep. needs to grow more. But, man, Joanna is my love. Like, mm-hmm. she is. She got my back. And we, like, a lot of a lot of our a lot of issues in my head it'd be, it's just me. Because even though I'm a positive person, mm-hmm. um, I I, I I slip sometimes, mm-hmm. and I didn't have to. Th- oh, like, I wasn't always yeah. a part, Jonathan. So when you talk about the energy, yeah. I would have that rah rah energy. I grew up in chaos. Yeah. So I'm in a relationship with somebody that's calm, yeah. not chaotic, and I tell people all the time. I wrote a book called Relationship Goals, and I said the reason why my relationship is healthy is because he never matched my energy. That's what and we so just... I just had to look in the mirror. What? I'm like, he ain't he ain't putting up with my bullshit. Yeah. Um, and so then that forced me to be like, dang, it's me. You know, yeah. I had to, I literally had to look in the mirror and, um, I, t- when people are in these kind of relationships, I said, you're choosing to match their energy. He doesn't do the whole like rah, rah stuff. That That's not who he was. And he wasn't changing for nobody. Yeah. And I said, that's the best thing he could have done for me because if he came at it the way I was coming at it, it wouldn't be how it is now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so last question of the day. Presented by Thumbprint Realty Real Estate Done Right. Respect your breath. Mm-hmm. Do you respect your breath? I do, yeah. And how? By taking care of me. Yeah. I, I it's a you know, my alarm goes off at four fifty four fifty AM three days a week. The house is dark. Everyone's sleeping. That's the time I have to go to the gym. And I, it's important to me, right? I, so I think about those moments where I don't want to get up. Yeah. I need to get up. Yeah. I respect my breath, right? I recognize how life is not short. It's what we make it. It feels short because we're not living it, Ooh. right? And so in order for me to live life, I have to be disciplined and do things I don't feel like. And so it's it's hard when people are like, oh, you're so lucky or everything happens. I was like, they don't understand the time and dedication and discipline that I put in behind the scenes in the mornings, especially it's about to get cold again, right? When the weather changes and it's nice out, it's easier, yeah. not easy, easier to get up. Um, my purpose is in front of me. My goals are in front of me. And so because it's in front of me, it's the reason why I'm able to stay focused. And so I do respect my breath because of my choices. Ooh. So can can we have a part two? Uh, you want to hear something crazy? And we're going to cut this part out. Uh, no, I'm going to tell you after. Okay. I'll tell you something after. But anyways, check this. Um, okay. I think we all got a free therapy session <laughs> on Gem Drop. It was a lot of gems dropping. And honestly, I just, I just hope that this, this episode made you a better person. 
I hope this episode um, keep you in a marriage. I hope this episode strengthened your friendship. I hope mm. this episode uh, made you fall in love with you. Mm. I hope this episode made you hug your kids even tighter. You know, I hope this episode reminds you to tell the people you love um, that you love them every time you leave a room. And I, I would say this is one of the most important episodes thus far. Um, and I felt good. Oh, good. I That's felt good. real good. I'm all like, look, I want to tell some of my issues. <laughs> um, but one thing I want to say, we, we spoke about intentional today, being intentional. I intentionally talk to myself. I intentionally yep. look in the mirror. I intentionally pick myself apart and, and put myself together, mm -hmm. you know, to understand who I am. I want to understand who I am. What's the issues? I had daddy issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I want everyone to love me. Mm -hmm. Everybody. I want to please everybody. I don't want to do this. I want to do that. And that's all issues that I had to solve. I had to deal with And I still work on it. Mm -hmm. And then I had some stuff I hate about myself. And you know what? God made me this way. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And all you can do is work on it. Mm -hmm. That's it. But guess what? Oh, let me tell you something. I got a lot of things to love Alex e. Edwards for. <laughs> let me tell you something. Like, he is he is a great person. Like, the things he think about his mind and 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 where he could just take an idea and turn it into reality. And then the words, the wordplay is crazy. And then he, the, the, his writing skills is just, I love that man. I love that man. His strengths. I love his strengths. His weakness, he could hire someone for it. But his strengths, that's for him. That's his gift. That's why I love me. And you have to understand why you love yourself. And once you fall in love with yourself, you will never fall out of your love. Point blank. So love yourself. This is Gem Drop. We don't gossip. We boss up. I love to keep speaking with you, but I got shit to do. See ya. God told me to meet him at a runway ever since I've been taking off.